Hello and welcome to St. Matthew Lutheran Church of Milwaukee. This is the service for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, August 20th, 2023. We begin with the church's one foundation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty, Almighty and, and merciful Father, Father we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us, according to your promises in Christ Jesus. Jesus. 
God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid for the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God in Christ, you bring people from near and far into the fellowship of your church. Open our eyes to your saving plan and move us to embrace all who seek your salvation so that we may rejoice together at the banquet of your love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, selected verses. These are the verses for the sermon, which has the theme on the inside looking out. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing Psalm 67. Our second reading is from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier 
the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is recorded by St. Matthew in chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came out to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We sing Hosanna to the living Lord. Yeah. 
God of all peace give you joy in believing. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ Jesus, have you ever been on the outside looking in? It's not a great place to be. This past summer, my wife and I and two other couples traveled together. We had some flight cancellations, and about 24 hours later, we had a makeup flight. But then we were told that three of us had seats on that plane, and three of us would have to be on standby. And we learned that we would literally have to stand by one side of the counter while those who had seats could go past the counter and sit down and wait for the plane was not a good feeling to be on the outside looking in. So today we can join Isaiah in all being able to experience the opposite of that. We can experience the joy of being on the inside looking out. And when we are on the inside of God's church, we look out with joyfulness at being accepted and with eagerness to gather others in. The motivation, the desire to be accepted runs very strong. For as long as there have been high schools and high schoolers and as long as there will be high schools, there will be a lot of high schoolers who have made some serious mistakes out of their desire to be accepted. To be accepted by a group of friends, to be accepted by a boyfriend or girlfriend. People will do things that they maybe even know are wrong but that knowledge of the wrong is overridden by the desire to be accepted. God addresses the fact that the Gentiles of the Old Testament, the non-Jewish people, were not accepted by God in the same way his chosen people were. They could come freely and bring sacrifices, but even the believers among the Gentiles had to stay outside to some extent. We heard in Paul's letter to the Ephesians his explanation to the New Testament believers of how that was different now. There was a barrier, a dividing wall between Jews and Gentiles, but Jesus Christ and his sacrifice have broken that down. He reconciled himself to the Jews and the non-Jews, and so all people have their sins washed away in Jesus' blood. It was time to end those separations. Separations which God had in place for a good reason so that he could preserve his promise of the Savior all through those centuries until Jesus actually come, until Jesus actually came. But Isaiah, the mighty seer, who a few chapters before this saw Jesus' sacrifice as the one where he would take the punishment to bring us peace, Isaiah could also see this distant time when the Lord would say, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. 
You know, there would have been a way for the non-Jews, for anyone to freely partake of any sort of worship of God. There, there would have been a way for anyone to even get to heaven, and that would be by keeping his law perfectly. Be holy, the Lord said, and if anyone could do that, they would be in God's family now and forever. But we know that no people can do that. We know that by our own sinful selves, we cannot even approach God. We couldn't bring sacrifices to the Lord's altar, but Jesus' sacrifice changed that. Isaiah anticipated his sacrifice changing that. And we think of what the Father in heaven twice said about his Son. This is my beloved Son. With him I am well pleased. I entirely accept him from eternity. And now I accept all those who believe in him. With them I am well pleased. In them I see my son's holiness. I see my command to be holy, perfectly kept, and then freely given to all who believe. When Isaiah writes about sacrifices of God's people being accepted on God's altar, even from us non-Jewish people, we are reminded of the Bible's descriptions of our whole lives being offered to God as living sacrifices. Now, are those things which we do for God in thanks to God perfect? No, they never are because we are still tainted by our sinfulness, yet God is happy to receive them from his children. The classic illustration of children's pictures on the refrigerator reminds us that when a parent receives from their three or four-year-old their work of art, the parent knows that that work of art is never going to hang in the Louvre or any other important museum, but they're happy to receive it and they're happy to display it because they know that it comes from their child out of love. In the same way, when God receives from us those obeyings of his commands, those acts of service and love that we are able with his help to do, he too is pleased with that. He's happy, so to speak, to display those things on the refrigerator. All those who love the name of the Lord, all those who desire to be his servants, he's pleased when we offer what we have as living sacrifices to the Lord. We know part of this life on the inside looking out, besides being very joyful that we have been accepted by God, Part of the life on the inside is an eagerness to gather still others in. Isaiah expressed the joy believers would have, especially as they fulfilled the Sabbath day and as they, they worshiped the Lord. The people he described sound like what King David said in one of his psalms, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. David captures the proper spirit of desiring to go to the Lord's house. It's not an errand. It's not a bill to pay. It's not a clock to punch. It's a wonderful privilege. Jesus at one point reminded his disciples that man was not created for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath for man. And what is also true is that God did not create the Sabbath day 
for him. He did not need anything, but he created it for us. His Old Testament people had a special designated seventh day of rest. We, his New Testament people, have, whenever we choose, to find rest in his word. And this, too, is for our benefit, not for his. It's so that we can review again the one who lived and died for us, who brought us righteousness and life, who takes away our sins, so that we can be reminded again, we are great sinners, but we have a God of greater mercy, a God of grace who freely and fully forgives every sin. And we on the inside with that knowledge want to be looking for others on the outside to share that with. When we speak of being on the inside, we might think of that criminal act which sometimes makes the news. Insider trading. That's when someone inside a company knows about something going on or about to happen in that company and they're not supposed to share that with anyone, but the temptation is there. It's very valuable information, and they share it with someone else. They're not supposed to, so that that person can receive all kinds of riches from it. We have to confess that we on the inside, we within God's church, are not as guilty of insider trading as we should be. We should be the ones with this valuable information we have. We should be the ones sharing it. There, there's not only not a prohibition against sharing it, there's a command to do that from our Lord. We have to confess our sins of failing to keep the Great Commission to go with the message to others. So much of the book of Isaiah has language in it like we had in our prayer today, come to the banquet of God's love. Isaiah talks about coming to the feast. Come here and enjoy what is prepared for you. That's the kind of thing we on the inside want to be communicating to those on the outside. Those on the outside can so often, as we can be, so discouraged by the news of the day. I saw a cartoon recently where someone is troubled and on the proverbial psychiatrist's couch and explaining they just are always very anxious about many things, all the things that could happen to them, the disease they might catch, the, the war that might come, the act of terrorism, the the plane crash, and so on. And the psychiatrist asked the person if they'd been doing anything different lately, and no, there was nothing different. But then he asked this question, do you perhaps carry on yourself at all times a device that will constantly give you all the headlines of news from all over the world? And of course the answer was yes, he did have that. And it would have been helpful for him not to always be hearing all of those bad things about what might happen to his body someday. All these messages that say someday your physical life is going to end somehow. Well, it is. But the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that nothing will ever harm our souls, and they will live forever. God doesn't want us to be spending our lives contemplating some impending doom for ourselves or for the rest of the world. To put it in a little rhyme, we can ask ourselves, do my actions and attitudes say, my hourglass is running out of sand? Or do they say, my salvation is close at hand? If my life ends soon, 
it's all the sooner to see my Savior. And in the meantime, I can be on the lookout for others to distract away from the discouraging news of the world and to tell about the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Our attitude is to be the same as the one the Lord spoke through Isaiah. I will gather still others besides those already gathered. In our weakness, we can look around our congregation and our church body and say, well, this is probably about all there's going to be ever. Who else would ever come? But that's our weak, wavering voices. It's not the voice and the attitude of our Lord who says, I will gather still others besides those already gathered. Yes, if we were on the outside looking in, if we were locked out of a home in the cold and someone finally opened the door, what joy to be inside in the warmth again. Look for those with whom we can share the warm good news of the gospel. What a delight it was for Myself and my other traveling companions, we were told, yes, now there is a seat for you. You're not on standby. You have a seat. Come on in. That's the spirit of confident invitation with which we can tell others about all that Jesus has done for us. Amen. We join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who has paid the price of our sins and reconciled us to God, make us fully committed to you and your gospel so that we feel an urgent need to share you with others. Help us to seek and save the lost among our families, neighbors, and friends, and bless the word we speak, using it to work faith in their hearts. O crucified and risen Christ, give grace to your church day by day that it may accomplish that task to which you have called it, to witness your name in all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. We ask all this in your saving name. Amen. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in the closing hymn. happy you were able to join us again as we worship the Lord and Savior of the nations. You're invited to do that in person at St. Matthew Lutheran Church of, of Milwaukee, 8444 West Melvina Street. Sunday mornings we have a service at 9. That service repeats on Monday evening at 6.30. God be with you till we meet again.